This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on India's digital economy. The participants are Sharad Kohli, economic analyst, and Sonu Sood, AIR correspondent. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman said yesterday that digital economy of India will grow exponentially and from 85 to 90 billion dollars in 2020 it will reach 800 billion dollars by 2030 on the back of rising internet penetration increasing incomes and also the young indian population uh, sharad ji how do you see the growth of digital economy in india till now and how hopeful are you that this target will be achieved we look at the sectors of growth as far as an economy is concerned and let's focus on india only to my mind this has been one of the fastest growing sectors in the country ever we have never seen an exponential growth of a sector we have never seen this kind of speed of spread of a sector we have never seen the numbers shoot up like this of any sector for me this has been a revelation everybody is amazed at because when government walked into this digital world and when the government started pushing forward this digital economy i think even the best of the minds would not have imagined that this would probably spread like wildfire and i remember so no you know uh, reading a book long long ago the book was called the very first book this was written on digital economy it was called i remember promise and peril in the age of networked intelligence it was authored by a gentleman called don tapscott and this was authored way back in 1995 however i read it much later and i recollect the book and you know it did refer to about the revolution that this whole digital intelligence can cause and we actually saw this happening so some of the people who got a vision they can actually foresee the future to see how this can move forward and if you see when we study digital economy so no we look at the components that what basically forms a digital economy so if you look at the components i think that will give our listeners a fair idea of where we are coming from and how is this digital economy leading to an exponential growth for that matter if you look at the components you know you have the government for the very first because that is the enabler you would not move into the digital world until and unless there is something very concrete provided by the government a platform is provided by the government and then of course there is policy and regulation made in that favor there is of course how can we forget the world wide web the internet which facilitates the whole thing then of course comes the electricity infrastructure the telecom industry the digital service providers human capital the knowledge workers so these people that combined or shall i say these sectors or these segments combined provide a platform for the digital economy and i think i completely agree in fact i would go one step ahead i am foreseeing it to be a multi trillion i mean if india in 2030 is projected to be let's say between 5 and 10 trillion dollar economy i personally feel that at least 20% of this economy would substantially be contributing or would be coming from the digital world the fm said india has over 6300 fintechs Uh, financial technology companies of which 28% are into investment technology 27% into payments 16% into lending and 9% into banking infrastructure while over 20% are into other fields so you feel that uh, the use of digitization has practically penetrated every aspect of our life uh, do you see tech startups playing a very important role in enhancing uh, let's say agricultural productivity and farmers incomes every sphere of- of life and uh, financial technology of course fintech is one of the most modern uses of uh, digital technology and today i think this also surpasses a very important aspect sono here to be mentioned that whereas we we were from the time of independence we were talking of literacy in this country that how far have we reached in terms of sakshatra as we call it literacy but somehow this financial technology has surpassed that literacy aspect as well today we find people if you go to the interiors of the villages where people cannot read and write properly there are still people in india who cannot read and write who never been to a school although the government is trying hard to work on literacy but if you reach out to these people you will find that financially and vis-a-vis financial technology they are literate you ask somebody to make an online payment to make a digital payment by using a wallet or you ask him to use a upi through his normal analog phone the person will be able to i was shocked the person who could not uh, put his signatures properly made a payment through his analog phone so i think that is the magic of financial technology and as you rightly said i think it has penetrated every aspect 
including our physical self. I mean, the human body, the whole world of medicine has changed. So you spoke of financial technology. We talk of banking. Look at the revolution it has brought to the banks. I mean, those days are not very far behind Sonu. When there used to be queues at the outside the banks, people used to queue up to deposit money, to take out the money, to get a DD made and so and so. Look at what has happened today. I mean, we see so many people who have rarely visited their bank branches. I, let me talk of my personal self. I do not remember visiting a bank for the last three years. Whereas I'm a very active user of the banking facilities, but I don't remember visiting the bank for the last few years. So I think this is all due to the magic of the digital world. And if you talk of the government's involvement in financial technology, look at the DBTs, the direct benefit transfers today. By simply pressing a button, Sonu, government can transfer. For example, we take Kisan Samman scheme. Today, if government wants to transfer to crores of farmers across the country, you know, the Samman Nidhi installment of 2000 rupees, which has now been sent so many times, all it needs to do is to just to press a button and the money reaches the bank accounts thanks to this jam you know we call it as jam jandhan aadhar and mobile i think this whole jam concept has worked totally contrary to the meaning of the word it has unjammed the total financial infrastructure of the country because if you have a jandhan account which means you have a bank account you have a mobile in your hand today 60 to 70 crores is the penetration of the smartphones in the country and ever since this penetration has come sonu i think this has been behind the digital economy push because people carrying internet in their pockets i think that has led from moving from the desktop from to the pockets and hands i think that has been the cause of the revolution if you ask me and more and more as we today see the cost of these smartphones going down day by day the penetration is growing today if a child in a village has a smartphone and his grandfather or his father uses an analog phone the child comes back and tell his father please switch to smartphone because i can't send you a whatsapp i can't send you this i can't send you you know so many a video or you can't see this you can't do that i think that is causing a matter of guilt in the minds of the adults who were not used to these smartphone technology so they whether they like it or not they switch but once they switch there is no coming back in fact they spread the word to 10 other people that look we were running away from this digital world for so long we were under a fear that probably we will not be able to use it but then when they start using they find it's just so easy and they pass on the word to 10 more people i think that is what is making it spread like a wildfire i think when we talk of banking we talk of e-banking we talk of net banking we talk of online transfers we talk of so many things which moves around financial technology in fact financial technology to my mind is just one of the spheres where digital economy plays the role of a fulcrum but there are so many other aspects in life i mean i can as the discussion goes on i can probably name a few more where it has brought about a revolution in fact few weeks back the pm had said that this decade is going to be tech aid so as you very rightly said along with fintech there is health tech there is ed tech there is agri tech so this sweep of technology into these various sectors of the economy do you think uh, that is going to help in faster development and increased uh, productivity faster gdp growth if you ask me as an economist, I would not hesitate in making a statement that a substantial part of our GDP growth today, knowingly or unknowingly, is being contributed because of the digital world, because of the facilities that the digital economy provides to the citizens of this country. And you talk of e-commerce, you talk of e-governance. Why forget e-governance? Look at the way government functions today. You don't need to visit those government offices. There are online portals of practically each government department in each ministry. In fact, within the government, the whole process of governance has has been revolutionized because of the system of e-governance. As you rightly said, health tech, the ed tech, telemedicine, online education, bill payments. I think these are some of the areas which have totally brought a paradigm shift in the way we talk to the government, the way we interact with the government, the way we conduct our daily life. It's phenomenal. I mean, it has brought about a change which this mankind had never experienced in the past. You talk to your previous generation. And in fact, you must have seen a part of the previous generation. Look at the way we interact today, the way we used to interact today. I think it's brought a complete, whether it is communication, whether it's talking between people, whether it is international calling, whether it is how you get educated. Can you imagine for these two years or one and a half year, everything had stopped. Can you imagine the loss to the economy, the loss to education, the loss to the children? 
thanks to the digital world that today children have been promoted in their classes children have given online exams children have had non stop online classes children have had online activities fine i mean we can never substitute the physical activity that can never be replaced by digital economy or the digital processes but then it kept things going imagine if this digital technology was not in our hands what would have happened in 2 years children would have been lagging behind in 2 years the whole economy some of these habits some of these technology pieces that were brought in at the time of pandemic sonu have become part of our life forever it has brought an irreversible change in many things today that we do and i think so the merits are just about unimaginable if we go on to list out the merits absolutely in fact you are so right that education work from home has become the watchword in the corporate world also and medicine these three are probably the top most areas which have benefited from this digital revolution in fact from digital rupee to digital university budget 2022 was Was all about digitization. Even in the field of agriculture, they spoke about drones. Can you tell us more about this vision of digitizing different sectors of the economy from the bottom to top, and how does it help in good governance and faster development? The vision is very clear. The vision is for a country which is completely digitized, a country which grows very quickly, a country where all the people are digitally literate as well. Which I just spoke about the digital literacy. We, there are people in India who cannot probably sign today, but the same people can use the digital technology even without being able to read and write. They know how to press a few buttons and manage their life. So I think the government's vision is to see that by the year, by the time we reach hundred years of our independence, that is India at hundred, Amrit Kal as we call it. I I think Amrit Kal for me, 25 years now is still far. We would be able to achieve a digital Amrit Kal. Let me coin a new phrase today. So our economy is overall growth. I think would be the digital world. Without the digital world, we would find it very hard to reach the goals and visions this government has set for us. We are paperless. We are today peopleless. And you know, one very important aspect. Well, some of the people when we talk of the digital world, Sonu, they say that hasn't the digital economy ended up taking some of our jobs because the process of automation you just spoke about drones in agriculture we spoke about working from home we spoke about automated processes within the organization within the whole economy so if the jobs people feel have been reduced then i must tell them that things like internet of things things like artificial intelligence things like virtual reality they are today creating jobs like anything you have these alternate jobs being created which are far more than the jobs being lost so i think the criticism which comes which says that the process of digitization the process of automation the process of pushing forward the technology is going to deprive a labor intensive country like ours of jobs i think that criticism can be refuted by leaps and bounds by the simple explanation that technology doesn't kill jobs technology actually if you go deep dive into the whole concept you will find that technology actually creates jobs and it has been experienced if there were a few job i just gave you an example of my office guy and today what the new position that i we recruited that office person today has three more people in the same position so the expansion the growth of the economy in fact more than compensate the loss of jobs you know which people experience And of course, of automation. Uh, technology such as e KYC, e Aadhaar have made it easier for retail investors to come into the stock markets. Smooth and easy access to stock markets, you feel, has diversified the pool of investors and made our stock markets very strong. I would have been very unfair if, in the process of digitization, I would not have talked about the stock market. Three point five trillion dollars of market capitalization today that Indian stock markets have. I feel that the whole process of digitization, the whole technology, is eighty percent responsible for this market capitalization. If it was not for the National Stock Exchange, if it was not for the technology, if it was not for the easy opening of DMAT accounts while sitting at your home, we would not have got this market capitalization of three point four. We today have more than seven percent people who are part of the retail investors portfolio. We would not have with nineteen lakh crores. Do you think retail investors would have? Have reached this level, and without the world, the digital world, the answer is no. So I think you name a sphere of life. I think this is discussion. Sonu would have been better if we would have tried to select Asian is not there, where the digital economy is not there. We would have found it extremely hard mm-hmm. to find out the phases of life, the aspects of life where digitization would not have been there. So I think talking of digitization, Sonu. 
let me make a concluding remark that importance of digitization today in our lives, in the life of our country, in our economy, is like talking of a human body without a beating heart. And that is what I would like. Thank to you so much, Sharad Ji, for this comprehensive and insightful discussion. You were listening to a discussion on India's digital economy. The participants were Sharad Kohli, economic analyst, and Sonu Sood, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.